Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. I do have one quick favor before we get to the video that you came here for, and that is very simply this. You see that little red subscribe button below this video? Go ahead, smash that subscribe button. It really does help me. It really does help this channel grow and my audience grow. So go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. And now, here is the video that you came here for. All right, very quickly, I do want to talk about things from the Arkansas perspective. And it's one of those deals where I think sometimes in life, two things can be true, right? If you're an Arkansas fan, you can be really frustrated with the loss. You can be really disappointed with some of the things you saw. But you can also take the 30,000-foot view and realize how far your program has come. And I think Saturday night was one of those nights for Arkansas. So first of all, from Arkansas's perspective, you got to remember one thing. Texas A&M is a really good football team. As I just said on the show, Texas A&M very easily could finish 9-1 and and be a contender for the college football playoff. Will they? I don't know. But they just beat Florida a few weeks ago. Their defense was phenomenal against Mississippi State, although I guess everybody's is. They're a really good football team. So Texas A&M, while I understand the frustration, especially on the defensive side of the football, for an Arkansas fan, Texas A&M's a really good football team, and I know they're a rival, Southwest Conference, you don't want to lose to them ever, the games have been close, but I think we got to look at it from the 30,000 foot view. First of all, even just in the small picture, there was some definitely some positive things. First of all, call me crazy, but I think this offense is starting to click under Kendall Bryles. Now, I ain't calling it Baylor in 1996 or 2016 or anything like that. But again, I'm telling you, it seems like it's clicking. For the first time, Arkansas was really, really able to run the ball on Saturday. Um, you look at uh, you look at Rakeem Boyd being back. You look at the way the offensive line played. Felipe Frank seems to get seems to be getting comfortable. I thought that was the best offensive performance that we've seen from this team. Now, I know you want a different result, and I know that a lot of the points came late. But I think that was the best, I thought that was the best performance that we've seen from this offense, even though, um, you know, it's essentially the same amount of points, and again, a, a couple scores late, and whatever. Top to bottom, I thought it was the best, especially considering, by the way, A&M's got a half-decent defense. I don't know if they're great this year, struggle against Bama, struggle against Florida, but those might be the two best uh Offenses in the SEC, but I didn't think Arkansas looked bad. Two, defense, I get it. I understand the frustration. A&M's really good. They recruit really well, recruited at a really high level. Jimbo Fisher now been there three years. He's got a lot of his guys coming in. He inherited a talented roster. Kellen Mond, by the way, he inherited as well. A&M's a really good team. So I understand the frustration for an Arkansas fan. You want to win that game. But again, first of all, there were positive signs. And then I think the other thing you got to consider, by the way, Think about how far this program has come. And I know it's easy to forget. And I know now Arkansas fans are intoxicated with victory. And I get it. Like, I would be too. By the way, I went to UConn. So nobody knows about losing football like a, like, like a UConn fan does. We're not even playing this year. But I think when you look at Arkansas, I think it's easy to forget how far and how fast this program has come. A few years back, don't know if you remember, one and seven. I talked about it on, on the episode two weeks ago. One and seven in the SEC. Brett Bielema's final year, four and eight overall. Zero oh and eight last year, or zero oh and eight in 2018 under Chad Morris in the SEC. Two and ten overall. Two and ten last year. And it wasn't just that you lost the way that you went zero oh and eight in the SEC last year. It was how it happened. As I said, two was out with injury. You play Bama. You think it could be competitive? Forty-one nothing at halftime. Play Western Kentucky. Okay, you'll win that one. Playing former Arkansas quarterback Ty Story, by the way. 35-7 at halftime. And as I talked about on the episode a few weeks ago, it wasn't just that Arkansas lost. It was embarrassing, and change had to happen. Chad Morris is out. Sam Pittman comes in. And I stu still do think we have to think about the big picture of how far things have come under Sam Pittman. Yes, you're two and three overall, but first of all, you should be three and two. I would argue this was you're more than ha you're halfway through the SEC schedule. This was the quote unquote worst performance that you've had because I, I take out that Georgia game in week one because that game was what like seven six at halftime or whatever I can't even remember. You played Georgia really tough and you just ran out of gas late. 
But to me, I look at this game. This is the quote-unquote worst performance. You put up 31 points on the road against a rival. The offense seems to be clicking. And now the defense can kind of look themselves in the mirror and figure out what they did wrong and how they get things right. And I'm not saying that things are going to be easy breezy and Arkansas is going to turn things around. Things are going to be incredible. I know the schedule gets tough. I know you still got Florida. I know you still got Bama. But I'd say this. LSU doesn't look unbeatable. Missouri doesn't look unbeatable. Definitely beat them in a fight. If their fight breaks out, you're going to win. But Missouri doesn't look unbeatable. And Tennessee this weekend is a big game. You're at home. Tennessee's struggling. You win this one. You go to 3-3. Three and three, All is forgotten. And so I think that even though you lose this one as an Arkansas fan, I do think there's a lot of positives that you can take out of this.